Something's happening. The bell's ringing. Yep. All right, I'm going to mute everybody else real quick. That's good. Good morning, and thank you for joining us, the, joining this virtual service of First Unitarian Church of Bolton on this 15th day of November, 2020. I am Nathan Brown, filling in for Robin Berkeley, and I am the treasurer of this congregation. The First Unitarian Church of Bolton is a small but mighty lay-led congregation located in Alton, Illinois. Due to the pandemic, our services are now virtual and are typically pre-recorded and located on our church YouTube page. Today, however, we continue to engage with congregants by providing a Zoom service where we can sing together, pray together, and be in community. We hope to see you at our Castle on the Hill sometime soon, but we can return to worship face-to-face -face in our building. In the meantime, we welcome everyone to this spe special place filled with comfort, spirit, justice, and hope. We are Unitarian Universalists. We begin our worship with a prelude played by Joy Hepp. If you have a candle nearby, please join me as I light my own and recite our unison words for the chalice lighting. We hallow this time together by kindling the lamp of our heritage. Good morning, everybody. I will give more of an introduction later, but I invite you now into a prayer that I wrote as a part of our Earth-based Jewish project, which we can talk about more later, but it was all about the fall and all of the things that go on. I invite you to join with me as you are able in prayer. May we learn to cherish the beauty and the wonder of the everyday. May we find awe at the way leaves and bodies feed insects and worms, bacteria and fungi as everything returns to the earth. May we learn to appreciate the majestic thunder of our own heartbeat, whether it be broken or exulting in any given moment. May we learn to listen and may we learn to do 
that our actions can reflect the magical, incredible gift that is this moment, this life. Amen and blessed be. I invite you to join us in singing our first hymn, number 158, Praise the Source of Faith and Learning. The words are located on the slide. That's what I get for trusting the slideshow. See, it's it's doing its own thing to me today. I do apologize. I'm just going to exit out and find the right way to go. One of the things that Robin asked me to share with everybody is the principles of you congregations. And today you all are focusing on, if I get it, there we go, the third, sixth, and seventh principles. These differences are an important part of a vibrant and multicultural life. And today we're gonna to talk more about the possibilities that are out there for us as we navigate through these differences. If I can get it to work, our second hymn today is going to be number six, just as long as I have breath. I goofed. Next is our credo. That's my apologies. Hi, my name is Nathan Brown, and today I'll share with you my UU credo moment. Um, I first found the Unitarian Church through um, my freshman year of college. I was looking into like a different faith practice. I had grown up Catholic for 18 years 
And about the 16th year, I just kind of started like, hey, I don't believe in this anymore. Um, and so I kind of looked, was looking for answers. And I just found out through, um, through friends and through like places around the area that I was at and found the Unitarian Universalist Church. And then when I moved back to um, Alton, um, started college at SAUE, I started going to uh, First Unitarian Church of Alton. And what really draw, draw, draw me in into the church is just the loving community that it offers. Um, of course, I was kind of spiritually broken and they gave me a place of warmth, security, um, being able to express who I was um, as a person and my spiritual beliefs. And that is why I am a member of First Unitarian Church of Alton. Now, how would I respond if someone asked about the church? Well, I just give them my experience of how I joined, just the community that First Unitarian Church of Alton brings to people, brings people together. There's so much love within the within the walls. And plus, it's a historic building and nothing in the area looks like it. And what would I like to share about my spirituality? Well, as a f former Catholic, I still kind of believe not so much Christianity, but I still believe um, like some parts of it, like I'm more spiritual, or spiritual, like still believe there's an afterlife. Um, I'm very big into the paranormal. Um, so I believe everything with that. Um, human Humanistic um, beliefs. Yes, I believe in that. Um, so yeah, there's my little credo for you all. Hope you all enjoyed. Now our hymn, Just As Long As I Have Breath. We are more than the sum of our parts. We carry with the joy in our days. We gather together to experience the warmth of community. You may choose to sit in reflection right where we, you are. We would like you to share your joys and concerns with us so we can stand with you in the happy times and in the tough times. We invite you to share your joys and concerns with, them by the, con with the congregation by emailing us to share that information in our weekly church this week. Please send anything you'd like to share at our email, church at firstuualton.org. Alternatively, you may, share to shoot, share, you may choose to share your thoughts, joys, concerns, and on the chat function here, or in our private group, UU Friends, on Facebook. We welcome you to join us at our virtual coffee hour after the service to share a conversation and receive support if you need to connect with others. Please let us know how we can support you in the good times and bad. 
please take a few moments to reflect on your joys and sorrows and send out strength and love to those who need it most at this time. I want to take a moment and thank Nathan so much for stepping in at the last minute. Robin is not feeling well today and has requested your loving thoughts. So good morning, everyone. My name is Claudia Hall, and I am so excited to be here. I have gotten a chance to work with your amazing board, and I am just falling completely in love with Alton. I'm currently the PRN minister, so the on-call minister for Emerson UU Chapel in St. Charles, and I was so honored to be invited to share today. I chose not to focus on anything going on with 2020 because, as Robin told me, we are so over it. <laughs> I think the entire world is ready to put this year aside and look to a better future. One thing that I think is really important to know, especially in light of the difficulties that many of our congregants have had this last year, is that Unitarian Universalism does in fact have a critical role to play in this better future. One that sometimes we don't even know how to articulate. The inspiration for this sermon comes from a little book titled To Reenchant the World by Richard Grigg. And it makes an audacious claim that contemporary Unitarian Universalism with its unique ability to bring together a plethora of different spiritualities within a single community is a particularly powerful site for the re-enchantment of the world, for the rebirth of the sacred. He talks in this book about the fact that as you use, we have an inherently positive view of humanity and human potential, even when that belief is tried sorely by things that are happening at the moment. This positive theology sets us apart from other religious expressions that say, for example, that we are born sinful or that all of life is suffering. We do not have to be Pollyannas, but our overall belief is that humanity has the capacity for goodness and progress. This essential belief in a positive humanism is one way to re-enchant the world. Humans are capable of change, of progress, of being, and of doing good. After the last four years, many of us have woken to the fact that there is a lot to do, for sure. But as a nation, we are rejecting the voices of the negative and said collectively that we wanted to be more. This wanting is a reflection of the UU sense that people can do better and that inherently we are better than negativity. A second gift that we have to offer the world is in the way we hold diversity and plurality as central to who we are. You use our big tent thinkers. We are on a quest to diversify. Now this started, of course, with fairly slender changes. 
in the beginning of the Unitarian uh, Church, it was still mostly rich, educated white men who ruled churches while women and minorities were told to keep their place. But now, more than ever before, you churches are showing their diversity, both in the pulpit and in the streets. Sexual and gender diversities are welcomed and celebrated, differing ability levels, both physical abilities and mental abilities, classes and educational status, skin tones and financial acumen. One area, perhaps more than any other, where we shine is in our ability to be united, not by our theology, but by our values. Whether you pray to Jesus, Allah, or nothing at all, you are welcome here, provided you can live in a respectful covenant with other beings. We are, as the author of this book tells us, on a solitary spiritual journey together with other people who are on similar yet different journeys. One thing that you use know how to do is to set a container that holds a lot of different things together. We do it not by insisting that everyone fit exactly in this one box, but we do it by offering a set of guidelines and then believing in each other to keep the faith. One purpose of religion is to offer a way to transcend, to go beyond what we are and into something that is bigger. What better way to avoid the trap of mistaking the ego for the eternal than by embracing plurality? By deliberately including multiple points of view, I can realize that I don't have to give up my way, but to realize that my way is not necessarily the best or even the only way. Yet our faith gives us healthy limits so that we can come together and say united what is unhealthy for our community. The board president of Emerson loves to say, we welcome all who welcome all. This is not just an unthinking sort of welcome. We do welcome all who come, but only if they in turn welcome others who are different from themselves. Every person who joins our community gives us opportunities, opportunities to learn from another perspective, to challenge what until now we believed without question, to grow in our ability to handle difficult times without needing to connect our ego to one particular result. This is hard and messy work, and certainly the last few years have shown us that there is a long way to go as Americans and as a human species. I go so far as to say that we UUs need to be actively inviting people into this work with us, not just because our churches need new members, but because we do offer America a model of how to live in a diverse, pluralistic society. America has, for its entire existence, believed and practiced segregation not just along racial lines, but along cultural lines, religious lines, educational lines, and economic lines. UUs are just about the only place in the country where multiple religions, skin colors, sexual and gender diversities, educational and economic backgrounds sit side by side in fellowship and learning. Do we have more to do still? Of course. The job is never finished. There will always be someone on the edges of our circle that can be widened to embrace. But rather than waiting for some unattainable or static perfection over there before we start, you use are committed to an act of radical optimism that says we will get there if we work at it. And why do we do this work? Because the work matters because this world matters. We're working for diversity because what we do here and now matters. We as, as a UU group have decided to believe that the future can be better, that humanity can be better, that love can win in the end, and that there is magic to be seen in the everyday. 
This radical optimism is what carried us as groups through the Civil War, through suffrage, through two world wars, through the civil rights movement, through the lunacy of the last four years. And it will keep carrying us through the challenges that lay ahead. It is not the challenges themselves that define who we are as a people, but our response to them. You use as a whole have decided that, to quote Mrs. Obama, when they go low, we go high. We are optimistic, not necessarily, by the way, as individuals, but as a collective, as Unitarian Universalists, we are optimistic. We think that there is a better future that is possible. We are pluralistic. We believe that we are better with more and different thoughts. We believe in hope that there is a chance for tomorrow to be better than today. All of these things are gifts that we can offer to a weary country. And all of these are a path that we can take to bring wonder and hope back into our lives and into the lives of those we have yet to meet. May we hold fast to our optimism. May we embrace our pluralism. May we hope to find hope no matter where our lives take us. And in doing each of these things, may we be inspired to find and to be the beautiful and magical in the everyday. Amen and blessed be. We offer the gentle reminder that this community of faith is supported only by your giving. We need each other, and in times of trial, we need each other even more. You can mail your gift to First Unitarian Church, Post Office Box 494, Alton, Illinois, 62002. Or you can give electronically by searching for First Unitarian Church of Alton on the Givelify app or via the link on our webpage. We also have a PayPal link on our website if you prefer to give through PayPal. Give what you will, for you are a generous people. If you know it, please join me in our offering prayer. This offering equips us to inspire love and seek justice. Join us for our next hymn, number 95, There Is More Love.
I hope that this time of reflection was fruitful for you. Even though we are not in the building, the work of the church goes on. Here are our announcements for this week. And if now, if you've lit a chalice or a candle near you, I invite you to join me in extinguishing the chalice. The light of truth and meaning cannot be put out. We are keepers of this flame until we meet again. Closing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had originally planned on a different closing words, but I just wanted to take this very brief reflection to close with. Our faith is but a single gem, all facets of the one. Amen. Our postlude today is Take Up the Song, which I'll play for you now. 